أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Well, it's day number three of the month of Ramadan already and we've been trying to go through these beautiful traditions from the Prophet and his noble family in hopes that we can actually attach ourselves to the noble Quran to connect to the word of Allah, to the book of Allah and to make the Quran more meaningful within our day-to-day -day lives and obviously one of the best ways to make the Quran more meaningful and impacting on us is not only to recite of the verses which again have a great reward and are uh, you know the life-giving content of Allah's revelation to us as human beings but also to realize that the best teachers of the Quran the best ones to instruct us about the importance of the Quran are none other than those whom the Quran was revealed to or within their home and obviously that is none other than the Prophet Muhammad and his noble family, the Ahlul Bayt. May God's peace and blessings be upon all of them. And so in this series of discussions that we've been going through, we want to reflect on some of the hadith, the sayings of the 14 infallibles and how they have guided us to connect to the Quran. Today we want to look at a tradition that comes to us from the sixth Imam, Imam Jafar ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, in which he focuses our attention on reciting the Qur'an not from memory, which is a very good thing because we know it's very highly recommended to memorize the Qur'an but in this tradition he focuses on the point of reciting from the scripture, from the printed version of the Book of Allah and the sixth Imam says the following in these regards Reciting the Qur'an from the pages of the Qur'an meaning to look at it and recite it, not from memory lightens the punishment of one's mother and father, even if they are both disbelievers. Now we know within the Islamic tradition, as has been a custom over the last 14 centuries since the Quran was revealed, was that this is a book which has always been committed to memory. People as young as four or five years old, young children from within our communities have been encouraged and many of them take their own initiative to memorize the Book of Allah, whether it be the shorter chapters of the Quran or indeed many young men and women around the world memorize the entire book of Allah. Some of them by the age of five or six or seven have memorized the entire book of Allah. And obviously that is very commendable, it is very, it's something very uh, that we have to really hold in high esteem and that you and I have to encourage to our children, our communities, our society, our you know, believers in our society to take the time and opportunity and to avail themselves of the memorization of the Noble Qur'an. But here the sixth Imam points us to a fact that we should not only commit the Qur'an to memory and recite it from what we have memorized by heart, but he shows us that even to look at the pages of the Qur'an, to look at the text of the Qur'an printed, is also a very rewarding action. And you know, we have similar traditions that, for example, to look at the Kaaba is a form of worship. Uh, to look at a scholar is a form of worship. To look at one's parents with a loving uh, demeanor is a form of worship. And here the sixth Imam takes it to another level and he shows us that to look at the Quran and to recite the Quran rather while looking at the pages of the printed word of Allah is in itself a form of worship and that it is actually a way for uh, any form of punishment which may be coming upon one's parents. Uh, if they have left this world and God forbid they are facing any difficulties in the grave in this intermediate period before the day of judgment the sixth Imam shows us that to recite from the printed pages will even lighten the punishment of one's immediate parents even if they were to be disbelievers and so this is something that we should all keep in mind in the forefront of our mind even if we have memorized you know anything of the Quran is that when we sit in the month of Ramadan or outside of the blessed month of Ramadan and we want to recite the Quran even if we have committed large portions of it to memory uh, you know it's still ideal to look at the actual text of the Quran obviously depending on the time and the place where you're at if you're not in a, in a, in a you know if you're in a position where you're not able to you know take out a copy of the Quran uh, by all means recite it from memory uh, but if you have the printed copy or you have maybe an app on your smartphone and can look and read from the actual printed text then all the better, um, the greater reward will be there, the greater 
uh, promise of the rewards that have been given to us by the Prophet and his infall infallibles will be conferred upon us. Uh, but ultimately the goal of all of this is to connect to the Quran, to recite it, to read it, to reflect on it, to ponder upon the contents, uh, to memorize it. All of these things are very important in the life of a believer. And as we go through this blessed month of Ramadan, let us take time to recite the Quran, maybe to memorize portions of it, uh, and just in general to get closer and connect to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.